All right, in this video, we're going to continue looking at the Chapter 3 practice test, but this video will focus only on questions 5 and 6 since they go together. Scientists examined the activity level of fish at seven different temperatures. Fish activity was rated on a scale of 0, which means no activity, to 100, which is the maximal activity. The temperature was measured in degrees Celsius. A computer regression printout and residual plot are given below. Notice the horizontal axis on the residual plot is labeled predicted fish slash temperature on it. All right, so first off, this will not be given to you sometimes. That was very nice of the problem. So do be aware that if you are given a residual plot, you need to know that where this value of zero is, that is your prediction line. That represents the least squares regression line. So it was nice that they gave that to you, but you're expected to know that for it. So don't get too trustworthy to the questions always going to give you away something. Sometimes you have to interpret it. Um, but it does give me a computer output as well. So something's going on that I need both of these. And I think that's important we understand is we're given both. So maybe both play a role. So let's actually read the problem. What was the activity level rating for the fish at a temperature of 20.4 degrees Celsius? Well, if I look at this, here's my x-axis. It doesn't look anywhere near 20.4, so maybe I need to pay attention to my variables. Well, maybe that's where the computer output comes into play. And I'm going to use the just values for y hat and x in this case but remember you need to label them based off of the variable hat but to make it quick let's just do y hat so we have y hat my predicted values are going to equal 48.617 i'm looking down here on my computer output minus 3.2 one six six seven x now remember you would if you're doing this problem you would have to define y hat and define x or you would just use your response variable under the hat and you would use your explanatory variable in a parentheses for it. but this is a quick way to do the problem since it's multiple choice we don't have to label them that way we can just get the answer so well how does it help me well x is the temperature for it. So if I take a look and I have y hat minus, I'm given a temperature. So I'm going to plug in the 20.4 for my x. And if I do that calculation, I get a y hat value of approximately 82.997. Now as a student, I mean, I'm going to go through and go, sweet, I mean, 83, awesome. I'm going to map, mark that as my answer. I see a number, it looks close, so I'm going to box it, circle it, I'm done. Um, you have to be careful. Because this y hat is your predicted. It's asking, what is the actual activity level rating? We want to know what's the actual value we're not asking for the predictive value so it's not 83 and you have to be careful for that is 83 is the predicted value from the equation it's not what was observed so it looks like b is a trick choice so we really must be careful on that one so don't i like doing this problem separate these two problems in the video because it's really in depth. It's not just a plug in and spit out a number because if you plug in and spit out a number, you're going to choose the wrong answer. You have to remember what do the values represent. And in this case, it's a predicted value. It's not the actual on it. So read into them with the vocab words. Don't rush to a solution. Now, why does this help or how does this help? Well, that tells me that the predicted activity level rating, which is right here, is, it's around 83. So looks like I'm going by tens on this. 
So here's about one third of the way. So if I follow this up and I'll mark and erase, it looks like I'm about right there on my prediction line for it. Which means the actual, what it's asking for, I mean, I'm thinking it's this point right there. That's what we actually observed at 20.4 degrees Celsius. Well, how does that help? Well, if I take a look at that, the distance from the prediction line and this point, I mean, those are residuals. So what is this residual? How far away is it? Well, it looks like our prediction was under that value. I mean, this residual is three. It's three units away from it. Which, wait a minute, there's choice E. Well, it can't be choice E. Choice E is the residual. I want the actual. So, I mean, look at that. I'm, I'm two numbers in I've found, and those aren't my answers because it's not the term I'm looking for. But can it help me? I mean, residual is what we observed our actual minus our predicted. So in this case, it is a positive residual. So I have three equals my actual minus our predicted, which was 83. So what is the actual level rating? It's 86, which in this case is choice A. This one takes more time than number six does, and I think it's really important you pay attention to it, is it was not a straightforward problem. And that's really important to know. We really had to apply our terms and our definitions. It's asking me for my actual activity level rating. But yet when I did the work, I had to find my predicted first. And if I stop, I'm going to choose the wrong answer. But I should eliminate that answer first because it's the predicted value. So it can't be the actual observed based off my residual plot. And then if I, okay, let's go, let's say I pretend and I, I know what I'm doing in this case. And I get this and I go, you know what? I know that's the predicted. And I go one step further. The next number I find is three. I find the residual and I go over here. There's three. So maybe I'm going to circle that. But I can't because that's not the observed. That's not the actual. I have to apply what is a residual. And I have to apply it backwards. I'm not trying to find a residual. I'm trying to find the actual. So we can eliminate B and E. We now understand why the answer is A in this case. But I want you to take a look at C. We can at least talk about where does 80 come from. Well, how could I get 80 from this? I could get it if I thought this was a negative residual. Remember, it's a positive residual from it. What we observed was greater than what we predicted for it. But if I said it was a negative residual because I went too fast and I just use A, and now I try and solve it, that's how I would get 80. So it looks like choice C was another mistake that could occur. If I misinterpret what's the difference between a positive residual and a negative residual. And in class, we kind of drew that line when we did our predicted line. You know, we wrote positive residuals up here. And we wrote negative residuals down here. If I misinterpreted that and chose the wrong number, I would have gotten C as my choice, which again is wrong. I really like number five because it's multi-step, it's in-depth, and it's really crucial to understand what the problem is asking for and what you have to find to get there. Now let's look at number six. 
which of the following gives a correct interpretation of S? So now I gotta find where's S in my computer output. It looks like 4.785 is right there. I can even kind of see all of them have that, so that wasn't gonna be a trick choice. So now let's read the choices and kind of cross out ones we know for sure aren't true. For every one degree Celsius increase in temperature, the fish, fish activity is predicted to increase by 0.4785 units. That sounds too much like an interpretation for slope. So it's not A. The average distance of the temperature readings from their mean is about 4.785 degrees Celsius. Now that sounds like an interpretation of standard deviation. Something's wrong with it, but I'm going to mark it because as a student, I'm reading, I go the average distance, standard deviation, and I might circle it. So let's leave it there. The average distance of the activity level ratings from the least squares line is about 4.785 units. Very similar to choice B, but this one uses a different word. This one above, B, uses mean. C uses least squares line. So there's a difference between them. I can come back and analyze the difference more. So it's either B or C. The average, average, another average distance. The average distance of the activity level readings from their mean is about 4.785. Well, this one looks just like choice B, except for here, the average distance of the activity level while the other one is the average distance of the temperature reading. So the variables are different on those. All right, B, C, or D. At temperature zero degrees Celsius, the model predicts an activity level of 4.785. That sounds too much like interpreting the y-intercept, so it is naughty. Doesn't look like much, but I go from a 20% chance of guessing to a 33.3% chance of guessing. So I'm, I'm pretty good, one out of three chance. So what is the standard deviation of our scatter plot of our least squares regression line? We're going through, um, it's not one variable. And that's why I can eliminate B and D. When I'm looking at the standard deviation of a scatter plot, my S of the scatter plot, I'm really trying to find the standard deviation of, this is the key, residuals for it, which means residuals are the distance from your observed values to the prediction line. So then it would be the average distance of the activity level ratings from the least squares line. I, it is choice C. Choice choices B and D really focus on one variable on it. It's saying, hey, how far away is it from your explanatory variable? How far away is it from your response variable? But S, with least squares regression lines, it is the average distance away from the residuals, which residuals deal with the distance from the least squares line, the prediction line. So it is the, but again, if you read fast and you just read the average distance of, Right away, you might say it's B and you might stop reading. But if you keep reading, like, wait, wait it's either B or D. Is wait, there's one Y, there's one X. Which one is it? The response or the explanatory? But you have to remember what does S stand for when you're looking at a scatter plot? It's the average distance away from the least squares line. It's looking at the average distance of the residuals for it. So this is the solutions to, these are solutions to questions five and six. Um, like I said, it's a longer video because there's a lot of vocab used in these two before you choose the answers for it. And the next video will deal with seven through 10.